way. So here we go. My name is Ben Azadi. I am super grateful to be with you. I am the best-selling author of four books, including my latest called Keto Flex. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people on planet Earth. I want to say thank you. Welcome. Let me know in the chat box where you're watching from. I see Norman, Oklahoma in the house. Good to see you on here. And start posting your questions for me. I'm going to do my best to answer as many questions as possible. I see Kareem in Egypt. I see, hey, Sally, of course, I know you're in te uh, Texas, Savannah, Texas, north of Dallas, Rebecca in Fallbrook, California. I see Sherry in the Philippines and many, many others joining. There was a question that came here on Instagram. Shada in Canada. Hey, Shada. Can you have carrageenan on keto? Now, carrageenan is typically found in nut milks almond milk, macadamia nut milk, et cetera. It is keto friendly, but for some people, carrageenan can upset the gut. So I would limit my carrageenan um, consumption as much as possible. But to answer your question, it is technically keto friendly. It won't bump you out of ketosis. Hey, Oregon in the house. What's the best ice cream for a flex day? I There's some good keto ice creams out there uh, that you could, um, like um, Mammoth is a good product that makes keto friendly ice creams mammoth creameries I, I believe they're called and also Ke killer creamery those are more keto there's sugar alcohols in there and then in terms of like a regular flex day um good old gelato if you're you know you're gonna have the sugar good old organic gelato that would be also acceptable for a flex day for somebody who's metabolically flexible kareem says for a flex day when can I apply this technique? Now, a flex day, if you don't know what it is, it's called Keto Flex. That's the premise behind my latest book, uh, Keto Flex. The goal is to use ketosis to teach your body to become metabolically flexible, to go from burning sugar to burning fat back and forth. Most people are stuck as sugar burners, which is highly inflammatory. It leads to weight gain. It leads to a lot of symptoms like insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, uh, and many, many others. So using ketosis and being in ketosis for eight to 12 weeks straight is a great way to teach your body to become fat adapted and keto adapted to essentially be a fat burner. At that point, eight to 12 weeks of strict ketosis, then if you don't have any metabolic damage like insulin resistance or type two diabetes, you can choose to have a flex day, a keto flex day. Keto flex day is just increasing your healthy carbs for a day and taking yourself out of ketosis intentionally with healthy carbs because we want to teach the body, number one, it's not in a constant survival starvation state. Number two, getting that healthy glucose and insulin spike helps hormones convert better. Hormones like the thyroid hormone, hormones like progesterone and estrogen, very important for women who have a monthly cycle. So keto flexing is the premise of doing keto for eight to 12 weeks and then strategically having a flex day. Now, in my Keto Camp Academy, I teach this. I'm also going to be teaching this process of keto flexing and other really amazing keto tips on an upcoming webinar that I'm doing coming up in a few days. So if you want to join the webinar, it's free. I'm going to be teaching clean keto versus dirty keto. I'm going to give you the history of ketosis, how ketones work in the body, and how to do flex days the right way. And that webinar, you could sign up that for that for free by going to ketosismasterclass.com. Alina, who's a part of the Keto Camp team, will drop the links in the chat box. Um, if you go to ketosismasterclass.com or if you're watching on TikTok and Instagram, if you just go to my profile and click the link, you could register your free spot for that. It's free. We're giving away a whole bunch of free gifts and I'm going to really dive deep into ketosis. What's the reason for eating proteins first than carbs? Yeah, so that's, Protein is very important. It's a good question. When you start your meals off with protein, number one, you're going to eat a lot less because protein is very unique in terms of the three macronutrients. You have protein, you have carbs, you have fat. When you eat protein, especially animal-based protein, it activates hormones and chemicals in your body. These hormones and chemicals, they're called cholecystokinin, peptide YY, leptin. These are all just signals to your body and to your brain hey, you're getting full, put down the fork, right? So it helps prevent you from overeating the carbohydrates that you would add later on. So that's why I'm a big fan of protein. Also, protein number two is important for muscle building, uh, which is also important. Muscle is a longevity organ and you want to build some lean muscle. 
Sharon in New York, thanks for joining. Hey, Den, thanks for joining. Debbie in New Jersey. Howdy, Gail in Texas. Good to see you. Chris, good to see you in Arizona. Felicity said, I just ordered your Keto Flex book yesterday. Thank you so much, Felicity. I hope you'll love the book, and I'm certain that you will. Enjoy it. Red Light Therapy brand that you would recommend, please. Yeah, hey, Brian and Jill Roach, good to see you on here as well. The usual, you're always joining these live streams. Uh, Red Light Therapy is great. It's called photobiomodulation. If you want to look into the research, you just go on pubmed.gov, type in photobiomodulation. You'll see a whole bunch of different studies on the benefits of it. It helps recharge the mitochondria. It could help with collagen production, anti-aging, wrinkles, et cetera, energy. Um, so I use, in terms of like um, a face mask red light, I use the one from Higher Dose. That's just a face mask. Red light covers the face. But in terms of panels, I have four panels right here. I'll turn it on so you all could see what red light looks like. It's going to make the room really bright, but here you go. There you go. So every morning I use this red light. I have four big panels here. Let's see if you could um, see it. If I turn the camera on, you could see it right there. Every morning I use this for 10, uh, 20 minutes, 10 minutes front of my body, 10 minutes back of my body, 10 inches away. If you want to learn more about this one that I have, you would go to mitozen.com slash ketocamp, mitozen.com slash ketocamp, and you could see the panels that I have. I have four panels and a cart that holds the panels together. Do you think food, qual food qualifies? Do you think food quality or qualify for dirty keto if they haven't hateful? I'm not sure what you're asking there, Axe. We never recommend, yeah, we don't recommend the hateful eight. We make no exceptions with that. Um, as Alina's mentioning here, go happy belly on Instagram. The hateful eight, if you're not familiar with that, the hateful eight are eight oils that you don't want to have, whether you're doing keto or not. They're highly inflammatory. They are more inflammatory than sugar, processed carbs. And some even say, some experts say more inflammatory than sugar consumption. So here's the hateful eight. Write this down. You have three C's, three S's, and two others. The three C's are canola oil, corn oil, and cottonseed oil. Now, canola oil is called rapeseed oil in the UK, so keep that in mind. And then you have sunflower oil, safflower oil, and soybean oil. You want to avoid those. And then you have grapeseed oil and rice bran oil. Those are the hateful eight. We make no exceptions on those here at Keto Camp. So I would recommend avoiding those as much as possible. Instead, you want to switch over to healthier oils. Avocado oil, terrific. Olive oil, awesome. Beef tallow, great fat to cook your meat in, cook your food in. And um, I also like ghee, butter, and duck fat, and even real lard as well. Those are all great. To my red light, now listening to Mito Brown, awesome. Mito Brown, awesome, Gail. You're on top of things. Is there a correlation between being post-COVID and weight gain issues? There could be. Now, you're referring to COVID long haul symptoms. And it's very, very common these days. A COVID long haul symptoms are a result of the mitochondria being stuck in this, what's called cellular danger response. So if you think about the mitochondria, every cell in your body has these energy factories called the mitochondria. They produce energy. That's one job and responsibility of the mitochondria. There's also a second job they are, there's an intelligence in your mitochondria and they're kind of like surveillance systems. And if you go through a big stressor like COVID and you already had your stress bucket full, then the mitochondria go into what's called wartime metabolism. Dr. Robert Navio has a lot of research on this wartime metabolism. I'm going to be speaking and lecturing on this at KetoCon next month in Austin, Texas. But wartime metabolism means now your mitochondria now think you're in a constant, stressful, fearful uh, wartime state, and it shuts down energy production, which can lead to weight gain. Absolutely, because the mitochondria, when it produces healthy energy and good energy, you could burn fat and lose weight because it increases your metabolic rate. So there is a correlation there. You want to do things to support your mitochondria at this point. Is soy BS? I'm not a fan of soy. So I would say for the most part, soy is BS. Typically, soy is GMO and um, sprayed with glyphosate and a whole bunch of nasty things. So I would avoid soy.
Do you consume duck eggs? If so, where do you get them? Are they better? I don't personally consume duck eggs, but I'm not opposed to it. I think it's a great healthy fat. If you could find it from a local farmer's market, that would be the optimal way to do it. Monica, good to see you back in the Bahamas. Miss Congeniality, good to see you on YouTube. Annabelle, good to see you in Australia. You're living in the future. I see Philonoma, Philomena, excuse me, from Lowell, Massachusetts, says, just started keto. I love it, but I have to have nine teaspoons of coffee mate in my strong coffee. So any, so my question is coffee mate, fat-free or regular keto? Yeah, I would switch out the coffee mate and good job starting keto. Congrats. You're doing awesome. Just keep going, keep getting better. I would switch out the coffee mate with uh, MCT powder, C8 MCT powder. That would be much, much better, or even some healthy butter in there as well. So butter and MCT oil or MCT powder will be a much, much better option. You'll get better results that way. Which almond milk do you recommend? I prefer macadamia nut milk and coconut milk, but if you're looking for almond milk, look for organic, non-GMO, and make sure it does not have carrageen in it. That would be important. Good to see you, Becky. Becky says, long haul, assist the body in getting parasympathetic state, increase sunlight exposure. Yes, I agree. That will help. Getting sunlight exposure, grounding, getting more into a parasympathetic state, which is that rest and digest. It signals to your mitochondria you're in a peacetime metabolism versus a wartime metabolism is great. So breath work, meditation, um, brain tap is an amazing device as well for the parasympathetic. So find ways to activate that parasympathetic. If you're not familiar with how to do that, on my YouTube channel, Keto Camp on YouTube, we have several videos on the parasympathetic nervous system. Does chewing gum break your fast? It does not, unless you eat the gum, which I don't recommend. So you're safe to have gum during a fast. MCT oil gives me a scratchy throat. Do you believe the powder would be different? Interesting. I haven't heard that. I've seen MCT oil cause diarrhea in some people, but scratchy throat. Yeah, you might want to switch to a powder or just put butter instead and see if that fixes it. What are your thoughts on sunscreen? I don't really wear it. Um, you know what I do use instead of sunscreen? There's some really fascinating research. I've actually done a lot of research on this lately. I'm going to pull up my notes here on astaxanthin being like internal sunscreen. So I'm not a fan of topical sunscreen because there's a lot of chemicals in it and you want sun. The sun is great, but you don't want to get burned. So how do you get the sun without getting burned and without having to put on toxic sunscreen? Well, you support your cellular health and mitochondria with astaxanthin. There's some research. So astaxanthin is a powerful membrane specific antioxidant that protects the mitochondria fends off metabolic disease, prevents premature aging, and increases physical function. So I have several studies here I'm looking at from PubMed that shows, uh, number one, astaxanthin prevents mitochondrial impairment induced by iso, pre and isolated rat heart mitochondria. Just saying that the mitochondria in the heart muscles of rats are protected when they were given astaxanthin. Another study showed that astaxanthin protects from oxidative stress and overweight and individual and overweight and obese individuals. And uh, so I would take personally five milligrams to 12 milligrams of astaxanthin on a day. I know I'm going to get a lot of sun. Like when I go play basketball for a couple hours here in Miami Beach, Florida, I take astaxanthin and I rarely, rarely get burned from it. And uh, that's what I would recommend for you. Are you a doctor? No, I'm not a doctor. I'm a functional nutrition practitioner functional diagnostic nutritioner, pr nutrition practitioner, FDNP. And I work with a team of about 45 doctors who are all across the United States and all across the world as well. Um, so I have a team of doctors, but I am not a doctor and this is not medical advice. Hey, good to see you too. Dminder app, great tip. I learned that from you, Becky. And then um, Dr. Courtney Hunt also shared that on the episode. How do you spell astaxanthin? A-S-T-A-Z-A-N-T-H-I-N. I wouldn't get astaxanthin from fish oil. I would get it from algae. The one I use on Amazon is called bioastin. Anything you could recommend from an aging immune system, brain functioning? Yeah, um, fasting. Fasting is incredible for the brain, incredible for the immune system. 
There's some research that shows fasting activates BDNF in the brain. If you don't know what BDNF is, it's like brain fertilizer. BDNF stands for brain-derived neurotropic factor. Miracle growth for the brain. 24-hour fast once a week, and it's a great way to reset the digestive system, which will help with the immune system because most of your immune system is in that digestive system in the gut. You almost spelled it right. It's with the X instead of a Z, Gina. I take 12 milligrams of uh, astaxanthin every day, but I have no idea that it helped with sunscreen. Yeah, it does. It also helps with just mitochondrial health. So there's many benefits to astaxanthin. I would cycle on and off of it. I wouldn't take it every single day. I would just reserve it for the days you're getting a lot of sunshine. Is it true not to eat protein alone? It'll make you alone. It'll make you gain weight. No, protein alone will not make you gain weight, especially if it's animal-based protein. I wouldn't worry about that. I want to start intermittent fasting on a regular basis, but I have such a problem drinking my coffee black. Any suggestions? Add the fat. You know, add some butter or some MCT oil. If that'll help you continue the fasting window. I'm all for it. You don't have to be so strict. So add the fat. Talk about rolling 24, 72 hour fast. 72 hour fast is great. Helps regenerate your entire immune system. I wouldn't do it too often, but 72 hour fast can be great. Maybe once a month, once every other month, depends on how overweight the person is. What do I think of OMAD? OMAD stands for one meal a day. I think it's a great tool. I wouldn't do it every single day, but if somebody's really, really overweight and they want to do it three to four times a week, terrific. Is it important to hit your protein requirement each day, says Trina? Not every single day, but I would say you want to make sure you hit that at least three to four days a week. So you don't have to, it's okay to be in a protein deficit some days because you get more autophagy and protein repair, but then you want to be hitting that on other days so you're able to build lean muscle mass, which is also important. So you don't have to get it every day, but three to four days out of the week is great. Can I fast if I have COVID? You know, when I had COVID, I listened to my body and I was... I always do this if I ever get sick and that getting COVID was the first time I got sick in four, five plus years. Uh, if the, if my body and my innate intelligence has an appetite and it wants to eat, I eat. If my body loses its appetite, I fast. So I listen to my body during COVID. I write books and fasting has helped me with creativity. Awesome. Annabella. I believe it. Me too. I'm fasted right now. And I feel the best when I'm in, a fasted state. Keep sending your questions my way, by the way. If you want to get registered for my free keto webinar, I'm going to share four secrets to ketosis to get long-term results. Head to ketosismasterclass.com. If you're signed up for the webinar already, type in webinar so I could see who signed up for that webinar. It's going to be freaking awesome. I read that astaxanthin. Is it in the vitamin A family? Is that true? Do we use it? It's not. It's different. Um, Kaizen ketovore. It's different. You could add that in, in combination with the fat soluble vitamins. Another question. I am always doing weightlifting and cardio while fasting before the WA. I have organic or I have scope organic wheatgrass, lemon MCT oil and B capsules. Am I, and I'm feeling like a rocket. Is it a sign that my body is in ketosis because I have no access to DHP strips? I mean, I, it sounds like it's working for you. You said you feel like a rocket, you feel good. I would keep doing it. Uh, it's hard to kind of say if you're in ketosis or not without testing, but it sounds like you are. So if you feel good, I would keep, keep doing it. I know you're going to be on there, Gail. You're a continuous learner. I love it. Gail is an amazing student in my Keto Camp Academy. I'm going to see Gail at KetoCon next month in Austin, Texas. If you live in Texas and you want to meet in person and attend an incredible event, I'll be doing a keynote lecture there, ketocon.org to learn more. It's July 8th through July 10th. We have a coupon code for you to get 10% off your ticket price, which is Keto Camp at checkout. Can I rotate a fasting dating with eating continually? Can I rotate fasting with eating are you saying having fasting days and having days where you don't fast? Yeah, that's a great rotation. Feast, famine, cycling is the name of the game. We teach that in the Keto Camp Academy and how to do it strategically. Fasting is great. Fasting is really good for the human body, but too much of a good thing could be a bad thing. So you want to balance out the fasting with the feasting 
Johnny, and good to see you on here. I appreciate your post earlier today. So yeah, key, uh, fasting days and, and feasting days are a great balance. And that uh, balance is unique to you. And this is exactly what we teach in the Keto Camp Academy. I have gout and months ago, I had to stop keto. Any advice? Kevin, go listen to my um, interview I did with Dr. David Perlmutter. Uric, high uric acid contributes to gout. And there are five things. I talked about this last week because it was a similar question. There are five things that raise, the, here are the top five things that raise uric acid. So write this down. Here are the top five things that raise uric acid. Number one, fructose, primarily in high fructose corn syrup and fruit juices and smoothies. So number one, fructose. Number two, fructose. Number three, fructose. Number four, alcohol. And number five, high purine foods. <laughs> So make sure you're limiting that. And you could, and I've seen people do keto um, by limiting that and do really well without any gout flare-ups. There's also other things you can add into the mix. Tart cherry uh, extract, um, quercetin. This could help drive down uric acid. You could always test your blood uric acid with a machine on Amazon called UA Sure. We talk all about that on my interview with Dr. David Perlmutter. That's available on the Keto Camp podcast and on the Keto Camp YouTube channel. So, and I also have a video all about gout and keto on my Keto Camp YouTube channel as well. MCT oil stopped my cravings too much. And if you don't need more fats, so stop it. I'm going to check into the webinar and see if timing allows me. I crave learning. Awesome, Sally. I would love to have you on there. You'd learn a lot for sure. Even though you're learning in the academy, you'd learn as well in the webinar. What brand of coconut milk do you recommend? I'm from West Virginia. Um, I forget the name of the one I use. It's a Whole Foods. It's organic. I actually use macadamia nut milk more than anything else. I use the one from Milkadamia. Coconut milk, I forget. It might be so delicious, organic. Trina signed up for the webinar. Let's go. Let's go. All good, Susie. Thanks for joining from Indianapolis, Indiana. Tracy says, I'm still getting over a mold-induced URI. Uh, I'm really grateful for fasting and the way it clears out the garbage. Hopefully I was in ketosis too. Feel better, Tracy. Mold is nasty. I had mold poisoning in my old house and I went through quite the health challenges with it. What can I do to, what can I do to burn belly fat, please? Fasting, exercise on a fasted state. There's also some research that drinking green tea in the morning on an empty stomach, the catechins in the green tea could help target belly fat. Uh, and then also cold and exposure. So cold showers and um, cryotherapy, polar plunging, et cetera. Lynn, good to see you in Florida. I'm also in Florida. I'm down in Miami Beach. You could sign up for the webinar by going to ketosismasterclass.com or just going to my profile on TikTok or Instagram and clicking the link in my profile. It's a free webinar and we have limited spots. So hopefully y'all are seeing this on time. Ketosismasterclass.com. Congratulations on your engagement. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. Thank you, three Martins. I appreciate you. Just starting to get back on keto and doing intermittent fasting. First week back on it, I've gained a lot of weight over the past two years and my blood sugar has been up higher than what it's been in the past. I've never been pre-diagnosed with pre-diabetic or even diabetes, but I'm concerned. My doctor ordered blood work, which I had done yesterday. I'm ready to get the sugar out of my body as quickly as possible. What's the best way to get out? <clears throat> get it out in quickest way. Yeah, I mean, uh, ketosis with intermittent fasting is a great one-two punch to lower your blood sugar. So I'm going to talk more about that on the webinar, Yvonne. If you want to join it, go to ketosismasterclass.com, but just stick with it. Keto, intermittent fasting, great sleep, exercise, like burst training, all great ways to lower blood sugar. And I'm glad that you're back on track. You've got this. Beat yesterday. One step at a time, one tweak a week. You got this. I like raw milk. Um, I drink raw heavy cream. Often, raw milk is better than pasteurized milk. LMNT does not break your fast. You're safe. You're good. Sleep is the key. Quality sleep, I should say, is the key. Green tea or matcha, both would work. They're both fine. Thanks for all that you do. 
had lamb for breakfast. I'm not hungry. Do I need lunch? Listen to your body. Lamb for breakfast is great. Listen to your body. Did you hear about apple cider vinegar in order to be, I'm not sure what the question is. I love apple cider vinegar, but I'm not sure what the question is. What should I eat after fasting for 16 hours? The best thing to break a fast with is with protein and fat. Thank you, Becky, for that link. Let me pin your comment here. If I could pin it, it's not allowing me to pin it for some reason. Oh, I don't know why it's not allowing me to pin it. But the best thing to break a fast with is with protein and fat. Bone broth is great. Steak and eggs, great. Protein shake, terrific. The brand of raw organic heavy cream I, I use is from a, a local farm here in Florida. I forget the name of the farm, but it's in Fort Lauderdale or somewhere in South Florida, not Fort Lauderdale. My friend gets it for me. Lynn joined the webinar. Let's go. Does uric acid fluctuate like glucose? Great question. It does. You would have to test throughout the day. It does fluctuate like glucose. Great questions. Y'all are smart. I love it. Super smart questions. Keep those questions coming. Hey, Heidi, good to see you on here from Spain. I love it. How do you feel about collagen? So Sharon. I heard it can raise your chances of breast cancer and what brand do you recommend? Haven't seen that connection to breast cancer. I think there is a difference between poor produced collagen and highly high quality produced collagen. The one that I use is from Paleo Valley. They have a good bone broth powder. Um, and then I also like the one from Systemic Formula. It's called ECM, which they actually have different collagen fibers that make it a complete protein. Thank you for the rose here on TikTok. TikTok, y'all are awesome. I appreciate y'all. My family is getting ready to go on vacation for a week. I know I won't be able to stick to keto or fasting. Do you have any suggestions? Enjoy it. Be present. Have an amazing time. The only thing I would not make an exception about when I travel and I enjoy myself are the vegetable oils, the seed oils that I mentioned earlier. As long as you could avoid that or limit that, Enjoy yourself, and then when you get back home, get right back on track. Never about the setback, always about the get back. So that's what, be, that's what I would do. Can I lose fat with apple cider vinegar? Apple cider vinegar can, can help with what's called postprandial glucose. So having like a one to two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar before a meal, especially a meal that has carbs, could limit the glucose response from that meal, which in turn could potentially help with weight loss. So I'm a big fan of apple cider vinegar. It also helps your liver produce bile, which helps you break down the fat in that meal. Uh, so I'm a big fan of apple cider vinegar. I take the one from Paleo Valley. They have a great apple cider vinegar complex. Jim Hobbs, you are awesome too. Thank you so much. Your podcast with Dr. Yoshi was over the top. Great. Thank you. I'm so glad you listened to it. That was a great, great interview. If you didn't listen to that, interview I just released two days ago with Dr. Yoshi Ram on the Keto Camp Podcast, all about methylene blue. Such an amazing interview. Go listen to it. It's on the Keto Camp Podcast. Are eggshells good for you? I don't eat eggshells. I don't know if eating the eggshells are good for you. I haven't done any research on it. I don't eat the eggshells. I eat the yolk with the whites. Trina, you should still have access to that. You have lifetime access to that. If you go to ketocamplogin.com, you could uh, see it might have been updated from a year ago. I probably added some videos, but uh, ketocamplogin.com and you could see access, full access to the entire starter kit. And thank you for getting it, by the way. How does one do keto and intermittent fasting if you're postmenopausal, if you're menopausal? Uh, in my book, chapter 12, I have an entire chapter on how to do it. There's something called the 511 rule. That rule would be great for postmenopausal women who do keto and intermittent fasting. You want to support your adrenal glands for those who are, do, are in menopause because the ovaries shut down during menopause and the adrenals pick up the slack. So find ways to activate that parasympathetic nervous system and to um, support the adrenal glands. Becky says, eggshells are a natural calcium supplement. I didn't know that. So never tried it or looked into it. So could be something to see there. Can I see your full shirt? It's backwards on TikTok, but it says ketosis and it has the on off switch with it being on and a rocket. 
I'm in ketosis right now. How many of you are in ketosis right now? If you're in ketosis right now, type in ketosis. I want to know who else is in ketosis. You can get this shirt, by the way, over at ketocampgear.com. Ketocampgear.com. And I get to see you in Vancouver Island. Chris is in ketosis. This Facebook user is in ketosis. Anne is in ketosis. Carl is in ketosis. I love it. Thank you, Murray. Good to see you on here. Kaizen, Ketovore is in ketosis. Casey's in ketosis. I love it. On my way is Chubby9Z on TikTok. I love it. Rachel's in ketosis. Becky's in ketosis. Heidi's in ketosis. Y'all are awesome. So you're feeling like I feel, which is a million bucks. I got this new... I got this new thing on my on my backdrop here. What do you think? It says, if it's backwards for you, it says, today is a great day. What an affirmation. This is actually the first thing I say in the morning when I wake up. I actually say, today's going to be a great day. Now I have this behind me as a reminder that today's a great day. Any day that you're alive and breathing is a great day. Elise is in ketosis. Summer says, low level ketosis. Hey, Summer, good to see you on here. Yes, look into those MitoZen. It's called a Lumitol Blue Summer. I think it'll be great for you. Every day is a great day. Amen. I was trying to put other text on this thing because you could customize. You could customize the text. I got this on Amazon, by the way. It's like 15 bucks. Comes with a whole bunch of letters, uh, but I couldn't fit the text that I wanted on here. I wanted to put a couple of different things on here. I wanted to put what you appreciate appreciates. That didn't fit. It took me 10 minutes to find that out. And then I wanted to put your self-talk today becomes your facts tomorrow, meaning your thoughts today becomes your reality tomorrow. That didn't fit. So I'm like, what else can I put that short and sweet? And this is what I came up with. Today is a great day. Amen, Anna. Amen. Alina's in ketosis because we're doing carnivore. I love it. A good meter for keto? Is that what you're asking? I like Keto Mojo. It gives you both glucose, blood glucose, and blood ketones. Keto Mojo is awesome. KetoCampMachine.com if you want to get their machine. That's right. What you appreciate, appreciates. Amen to that. Monica's in ketosis. I love it. Health Hollows in ketosis. El Quate C10. Keto has helped me lose weight and feel good. What's your recommendation on a mess a day? And fasting, continue burning fat, but maintain weight. Yeah. I'm not sure. What's your recommendation on? I'm not sure. Could you rephrase the question? There was kind of a typo there. Two types of a good day and a great day. <laughs> I love it. The webinar link is uh, ketosismasterclass.com. I would love to see you on there. Ketosismasterclass.com. In about 90 minutes, I'm going to be hopping on a Zoom with the amazing Dr. Mindy Pels, my friend and colleague, and we're going to do a co-podcast together where we're going to answer questions that were submitted on my Instagram stories, on her Instagram stories, and we're going to do an Ask Me Anything hour just answering those questions, and we're going to both release it on our podcast at the end of the month. That's going to be super cool. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. If you're not following Dr. Mindy Pels, she has an amazing podcast called The Resetter Podcast, and she has a fantastic YouTube channel. Her name, Dr. Mindy Pels. She is amazing. She's going to be speaking at KetoCon along with me next month. We're doing keynotes and my mentor, Dr. Pampa. So if you've never seen Dr. Pampa in action, go to KetoCon. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be incredible. Today, I worked out, fasted with weights, drink water, eat eggs, ground beef, and coffee. I'm in ketosis. That is a rock solid routine. I love that. Good job. Do you ever make your own keto bread? I don't make my own keto bread. Um, I like base culture, but it does have a lot of almond flour, and you want to make sure you're not overdoing it with that because too many oxalates could be a problem, especially for me. I think I'm oxalate sensitive. Is palm oil and palm fruit oil bad? It's not that it's bad if you use it like in your coffee, but it's the, the, the processing of it. So you want to make sure that it's sustainably sourced palm oil because a lot of the palm oil that's manufactured is bad for the environment. So make sure it's sustainably sourced palm oil. Yeah, I love Dr. Mindy too. She's amazing. 
Thank you. I've been listening from here in the Philippines. Thank you, Jen. Hope the Philippines are incredible. Love to go to Chicago. If you go to ketosismasterclass.com, you can see when the webinar is going to take place. Malaysia. I love it. Malaysia in the house. Keep sending those questions. If you're not subscribed to the Keto Camp podcast, uh, go subscribe to it. It is incredible. We release two to three brand new episodes every single week. It's available on all podcast platforms worldwide. Keto Camp podcast. We are super excited about that. We have a brand new episode coming out this Friday with Allison Pillow, all about thriving, healing your body with the subconscious mind, morning routines, and much, much more. What if I'm messing up on vacation? Forget about the setback, focus on the get back. That's what I would recommend. Avoid the seed oils, be active, move around, and just get right back on course. Forget about it. And you know, if you enjoyed yourself, that's very important. There's, there's many health benefits to enjoying yourself with your friends and family. How do you build muscle while running every day? Is it, is it possible? Yeah, uh, you want to lift weights in combination with the running. You want to get quality sleep. You want to work on your gut and you want to increase your animal-based protein and you could definitely do it. I subscribe to our YouTube channel plus listen on Spotify. You are awesome, Anna. I appreciate you. Thank you very, very much. Mar Maritha says, you always have the most incredible guests, Ben. Thank you so much. Hey, if you are listening to the Keto Camp podcast and you haven't left it a rating and review, please do that. It really helps. Um, and I would love to read your review on the next episode. Supplements to support the adrenals. I like to rotate between um, systemic formulas. has a good one called GA. That's a good start. Apple cider vinegar pills. They're not all great. You got to make sure it's from a quality company. So I use the one from Paleo Valley. They have a great apple cider vinegar complex. Paleovalley.com, apple cider vinegar complex. And if you use, uh, what is it? I think it's Keto Camp 1.5. You'll get 15% off your order. What time do you stop eating? Quick question. What time do you stop eating for your fast? Yeah. So for me, I typically have my eating window is between like 1 PM and 6 PM. I usually have like a five hour eating window. That's my go-to. Love your episode with Morley Robbins. I made some changes after listening. That was a great episode. Such a paradigm shift, huh? So I'm glad you heard that. I also made some changes too. I increased my uh, B propolis. I increased my vitamin C whole complex supplementation, magnesium, and a few other things that I did based off of that interview. Thank you, Anna, for leaving the review. I appreciate you. Ben, how do you feel about having keto treats on a daily basis? I feel like I can't get by without a little something after my meal, although a lot of times it's keto granola berries and Greek yogurt. I think it's fine as long as you're doing it with your meal, not in between, and you feel like you're still getting results. I'm, a, I'm good for, with it. Summer says, I think the traveling thing is easier than one would think. I just like to have my BHACL, no sugar, electrolytes, and maybe some chomps. Yeah, I, I like to bring electrolytes when I travel, Paleo Valley beef sticks, and my hydrogen tablets are like my go-to when I travel. What kind of magnesium are you taking? I rotate between... Upgraded Formulas has a really good one called Upgraded Magnesium. It's a nanoparticle. And then I use the one from, I think it's Designs for Health. Professional boxers always have to stay on weight. What do you recommend for recovery? Professional, I'm not sure what the question, can you rephrase that? Professional boxers always have to stay on weight. What do I recommend for recovery? Like recovery from the workout? Um, I'm not sure what you mean. Randy, thanks for all the hearts. I appreciate you. Good to see you back on here. Can't wait to go back to your portal. Heidi, let's do it. You got access to it. So when you get back home, ketocamplogging.com, get in that portal. We're here to support you. What supplements support adrenals? Systemic Formulas GA over at ketocampsupplements.com. So Systemic Formulas GA. I'm a truck driver. I really enjoy your live TikToks. Awesome, Barry. 
stay safe out there. And um, thanks for listening on the road. Being a truck driver is a very challenging occupation. But you help us get all the things in our household. So thank you for being a part of that. I appreciate truck drivers very, very much. They make things move. I have to have my keto snacks. I feel like it keeps me going. Then keep going with it. Have it with your meals as opposed to in between your meals. Is it true that magnesium, calcium, and vitamin D should always be? It could help, Jen. Um, if you take those together, magnesium, calcium, and vitamin D definitely could help, especially magnesium with vitamin D. You don't have to, but it can help. After making weight and fighting the next day. Yeah, I would go back to your routine. You know, keto and intermittent fasting. The thing that you did before making your weight. Go truck drivers. We appreciate you. That's right. We do. We do. When I up my fat, the scale goes up. Thoughts. I would, the scale is going to fluctuate for many, many, many reasons. I would more accurately, instead of looking at the scale, look at your body fat percentage. And if you see your body fat percentage is going up, then you want to scale down the fat and focus on protein. Healthy fat is great, but keep in mind, your body does need to burn dietary fat and then it goes to your body fat. So it could slow down your fat loss results. So if you're adding a whole bunch of fats to your coffee, a whole bunch of additional fats to your foods it could potentially slow down fat loss. So you might want to limit that and focus on protein. I love frozen raspberries in my protein shakes, but it raises my glucose around 30 points. Should I stop? Yeah, Sean, I would switch that for blueberries to see what happens and blackberries to see what happens because I imagine each fruit will give you a different response. That seems like it's a high spike for you. Is it true when you divide your HDL and triglycerides, the number should be less than two if you are not... If not, you are insulin resistant. I wouldn't use that as an insulin resistant factor, but I would look at, at assessing your risk of a cardiovascular disease. So what you want to do is take your total triglycerides divided by your total HDL, and you want to see that under two, even better under 1.5, and that will be low risk of a cardiovascular event, not so much insulin resistance. If you want to check for insulin resistance, then go get a fasting insulin done. And if your fasting insulin is over 10, you got insulin resistance. You want your fasting insulin to be between two and five. That would be a good optimal range. Everybody go get your fasting insulin done from your doctor. Very, very important. What's the best protein? Animal-based protein, whole food. Red meat is the best protein, especially organ meat, like liver. How can I order your book? Thank you for asking, Barry. You can get the book over at ketoflexbook.com. It goes to the Amazon page. It's available right now on Kindle, paperback, and Audible, ketoflexbook.com. Sophia says, I have subscribed for some time, but I never had the pleasure in talking with you. I'm on limited income because of mental in illness. How can I practice keto on a limited income? Sophia, do the best you can with your resources. I have a ton of free guides uh, KetoKickstartGuide.com is a free guide. KetoCampBlueprint.com, free guide. My webinar coming up, KetoCamp, or KetosisMasterclass.com, free hour session. And uh, I'll, I'll be happy to continue putting out free content. Just do the best you can. You know, the cool thing about intermittent fasting, it's free and you could save money. So that's what I would recommend. For those of you going to KetoCon in Austin, Texas next month, I can't wait to see you. We're going to do a Keto Camp meetup. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, I don't like the taste of liver. I use the one from Paleo Valley. They have an organ meat complex. That's the one I use. Where do I find your podcast with Morley? Love that guy. What electrolytes do I take if I travel a ton? Morley is awesome. If you just go to Google and type in Keto Camp Podcast Morley Robbins, it'll pop up. Or if you go into like Spotify or iTunes, wherever you listen to podcasts, type in Keto Camp Podcast Morley Robbins, it'll pop up. In terms of electrolytes, I like Redmond's Relight. And I like LMNT. Those are my go-to for electrolytes. Do you always have to be in ketosis? Is it even recommended? Or is it okay to exercise flexibility between glucose and ketone burning? Lady, that's exactly what we teach. Keto flexing is going back and forth between the two. I don't recommend long-term ketosis. So... You want to use it for metabolic flexibility, not to be dogmatic. So in and out. 
of ketosis. And I teach that in my book, Keto Flex. How do you feel about a cheap meal protocol? I've heard chromium, astaxanthin, fish oil, saline, cinnamon are good things to take when eating high carb foods to lessen the glucose spike. Is that true? I don't like the concept of cheat meals. I like feast meals with healthy carbs, but if you're going to have a cheat meal, there are some things you could do to mitigate the damage from the glucose response. Chromium, yes. Astaxanthin, I'm not sure with the glucose response. Ceylon cinnamon, yes. Fish oil, no. I'm not a fan of fish oil. There's also dihydroberberin. That could be great. And bitter melon extract all have been shown to reduce that glucose response. Perfect Aminos is amazing. Yeah, that is a great product. I love Perfect Aminos. And Anna says, I'm on a limited income. Believe me, it can be done. Awesome, Anna. Way to rock it. Can fasting cause vomiting 28 hours in? And I thought it was on my end. I haven't seen fasting cause that. It might be some other reason. Letitia, I hope you feel better. If you have access to hydrogen water, that might help. What's worse, white sugar or white bread? If one slice of wheat, white bread has 12 grams of carbs, how much is that? In they're both bad and they're going to be quickly absorbed. So in terms of what's a lesser evil, probably the white bread. And if there's some fiber in it and you add some fat and protein, it'll be less of a glucose response, but both are going to be bad. You're welcome, baby dolly on Instagram, my pleasure. All right, my friends, um, hopefully I'll see you on the keto webinar coming up. I'm going to share four secrets to mastering keto. I mean, I'm going to dive deep into keto flexing, clean keto versus dirty keto, how ketones help your mitochondria produce more energy and much more. Plus I'm giving away over $300 worth in free downloads for those who attend the webinar. We are about to reach our capacity so hopefully you're seeing this and you're going to take action and go to ketosismasterclass.com. If you're watching on TikTok or Instagram, click my profile and the link is there or just go to your web browser and type in ketosismasterclass.com, register for free. Yeah, I don't know why that's happening, Summer. I don't get, I've never seen that with Fast Tonic causing more hunger. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Regarding fatty liver, Sophia, if you go to YouTube and type in Keto Camp Fatty Liver, I have a whole video on fatty liver. Jelly says, I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes a month ago. My doctor recommended a keto diet, and I have been um, since I've lost 13 pounds already. Let's go. When do you think I should be able to do lab tests to see if it's working? Yeah, I think 90 days in to do your test again, and you should see some significant changes. So congratulations. Way to take action. Your doctor is awesome for recommending keto. It's the right approach. Super proud of you. I want to keep keep sharing and joining. I want to hear more about your journey as well. So congrats. You know, type 2 diabetes is not a lifelong sentence. We need to understand that. Type 2 diabetes is actually fairly easy to reverse. It's not a lifelong sentence. No matter what the American Diabetes Association website tells you, no matter what your conventional doctor tells you, you can reverse type 2 diabetes and you can happen in a matter of weeks to months. You are in control. Don't let anybody else fool you. Your body is amazing. Your body is capable of healing itself. There's nothing external that you need. It's all internal. You just have to remove the interference. So Jelly, you are removing the interference. You're doing keto. You're removing the high carb foods, the snacking, etc. You pair it keto with intermittent fasting. Great one-two punch for reversing type 2 diabetes. If you know a family member who has type 2 diabetes and they're a victim of their medication and the conventional approach to it, they need this information. I lost my dad in 2014. My dad died from the complications of diabetes. And here's the truth. Most people don't even die from diabetes. It's pretty damn rare to die from diabetes. People who die are dying from the complications of the diabetes. Think about it. The cancer that develops from the diabetes, the heart disease, the kidney failure, the amputations and infections, the strokes, that is what's killing the person, but you could prevent all of that. You are in control. Do not let your diagnosis determine your future. You're in control. Remember, three steps to healing your body. I outlined this in Keto Flex. Number one, identify the interference. 
Number two, work on removing the interference like Jelly is doing with keto and uh, possibly intermittent fasting. Number three, allow your incredible body to heal. Like Becky just said, you are not a diagnosis. You're a human being and you, your body has an innate intelligence that's amazing and that can heal itself. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. I know doctors have their lab coats and they can be very um, influential, but you are in control. We've seen in my Keto Camp Academy, dozens and dozens and dozens of students reverse their type 2 diabetes, get off their insulin, get off their blood sugar reducing meds. It can be done. You're in control. Your genes are not your destiny. You are your destiny. Keto, intermittent fasting, quality sleep, and burst training are all great ways to reverse diabetes. I also recommend you go to my YouTube channel and type in Keto Camp Diabetes. I have a ton of videos, a ton of videos on that. Testing ketones in the morning, staying at the 1.0 range for ketones, moderate GKI. Yesterday before the last meal was 2.7, high GKI. Why such a difference? Uh, I wouldn't be concerned about that. Q from, um, excuse me, Pat. Those are great numbers. You're in the optimal range. Glucose and ketones are going to fluctuate, but you went from 1.0 to 2.7. That's a good sweet spot. So I wouldn't stress out about that. I think that's an awesome range to be in. Thank you, uh, Health Hollow. I appreciate you. Why are you wearing blue light? light black, why are you wearing blue light blocking glasses during the day? Scotty, good question, because there's blue light all, all around me. These are called daytime blue light blocking glasses. And it's, so you see the light, I don't know if you can see it reflecting off my glasses here. There's a light here, there's a light on my phone, on my computer screen, there's a light back here. These are all fluorescent lights. They're called junk light. And if I have these off of my glasses, the junk light goes right into my eyes, and then my brain needs to filter out the junk light. Using energy and resources to filter out the junk light. By putting these on, I take that load off my brain so my brain could focus and feel uh, great. So I could feel great and think and crush my day and pe be productive. So these are yellow glasses that are for daytime. And then at nighttime, I wear the orange red ones that filter out different spectrums that help your body get ready for bed. So good question. And that's why I'm wearing it. Recommendations on eating and fasting to maintain weight but burn fat. Getting quality protein doing some strength training and quality sleep is a great protocol. I'll talk more on the webinar. So join that 22 hour fast, uh, good enough to burn fat that you'll burn some fat with a 22 hour fast, but I would also make sure you're getting quality sleep. And when you eat, you're eating uh, whole food sourced and ideally ketogenic insulin friendly meals. Had an uncle who helped raise me and he had passed away July 18, 2004 from the complications of diabetes. I was diagnosed with it type two less than a year ago since I've been keto and it's under control. Awesome, Caitlin. I'm sorry to hear about your uncle and I'm glad that you took ownership and have it under control. You know, here's the deal. If you treat your health casually, you will end up a casual T. I'm going to say it again because for many years I treated my health casually. If you treat your health casually, you will end up a casual T. We don't want that. We want to be healthy. We want to be vital. We want to burn fat. We want to feel good. And we want to do it for a hundred plus years and you can do it. No, I don't wear prescription glasses, Arlene. These are just strictly blue light blocking glasses, no prescription, but you can get them done with a prescription. You can get them done with a prescription. How much protein do you really need? So much confusing info out there. Good, Rich. I'm going to cut out all the confusion. If anybody's wondering how much protein should I eat, I'm going to make it very simple for you. And Alina just said it too, but I'm going to reiterate what Alina just said for other people to see and hear. You want to determine your ideal body weight. For example, if you weigh 200 pounds right now, but your goal body weight is to get to 150 pounds, then that's your ideal body weight, 150 pounds. Then you want to consume one gram of protein per pound of your ideal body weight. So in this example, it's 150 grams of protein per day. Now, that doesn't mean every single day. 
you need to eat 150 grams of protein. But it does mean for maybe three to four days out of the week, you want to make sure you hit that target. On the other days, it's okay to be in a protein deficit. That's great. You get more autophagy, more protein repair. So you don't hit that goal every day, but you hit that goal three to four days a week. Boom, there you go. And you want to make sure your protein comes from animal-based protein, not plant-based protein. That's very, very important. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Every Wednesday, I go live with you on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. So set a reminder, next Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, I'll be live with you again to answer more questions. Go get registered for my free webinar over at ketosismasterclass.com. It's going to be incredible. 60 minute of life-changing information. Sign up for it. It's free. And go subscribe to the Keto Camp YouTube channel, Keto Camp Podcast, Benazadi Instagram, Benazadi TikTok. And I want to say thank you. Love you. Appreciate you. Have a great rest of your day. Get that vitamin G gratitude in. And we'll talk very soon.